Thank you, Lord. Thomas Manton the Fourth. That's me. All right. I brought uh, this great book, which is the greatest book of all time, the Holy Bible. It's the best-selling book by the best-selling authors, the forty prophets that wrote it over fifteen hundred years. 1,189 chapters, about 865,000 words, thousands of promises from God, 66 books, and the prophet Isaiah even had 66 chapters, so God must have really loved him to give him the same amount of chapters in his book as were in the whole Bible. It started in Genesis with the five books and went on to the... Uh, you know, the kings and the chronicles and Job and then the prophets, the minor prophets and the major prophets. What's in this book is so fabulous that if you get into it, your, your life can never remain the same. Do you have your Bible? Hold it up before the Lord if you have a Bible. Hold, if you have a Bible, hold it up and just wave it and say, Lord, here, 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 look at this. This needs to come to pass in my life. Amen. I don't see uh, people holding Bibles. You came without your Bible. Oh, I see one, two, okay, all right, all right. So the Lord is interested in us taking heed according to his word. Our life needs to be full of the power of his promises coming to pass. And that's what the Lord is talking about in this hour. He's talking about Promises being fulfilled. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to live uh, a, a bad life. Can you say amen? amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to live a bad life. You have to live a good one. The plan for the good one is right here. And the Lord thought so much about writing, he has me writing many books <laughs> And I have this great book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, that I wrote. And the foreword is written by uh, our beloved Archbishop. Uh, he thought so much of me. He wrote three pages about the anointing that we carry and, you know, the impact of our ministry. And, and the Lord is just doing so many things around the world. Very exciting. And I'm going to get into a couple of things from this book, and you could also get a copy of it here today. If you want to meet me at the table in the back uh, after I finish here, we'll, we'll, we'll sign a copy for you if you want to get it. I'll be glad to do that. I heard the Lord say that um, in this season, he's going to bring us manifestations of promises that he gave us for our lives. Things that we're believing for that we haven't seen yet, we're going to begin to see them happening. And it's not going to be a time to, to wait or to waste or to wonder. Everything needs to change now. Say amen. amen. Everything needs to change for the better. If it doesn't, then I don't know what we're doing. I don't know who we're with. I don't know where we are. It's, it's, it's all nonsensical. And one thing I found out, the power, I, I spoke about this in the book. I, I'm going faster. I didn't know I'd go that quick into it, but people. I want to talk about people in a minute. I want to share a scripture first, but uh, the people you surround yourself with mean a lot. You know, they can, they can lead you to the wrong place or they can take you to a good place depending who they are and what's in them. You have to be very careful about your environment. Some of the setbacks people have is having the wrong people. If you have a devil in your midst, it's very unfortunate at what you lose from that. But the only thing that needs to happen is God needs to expose them and destroy them. Lift your hands. And this is a season where the judgment of God is going to hit the evildoers. They're not going to be able to do the things against God's people that they've done. And get away with it. Proverbs 17, 13 says, If you give evil to a good person, evil will never leave you. So when people do evil things, they curse themselves. They think they stole. 
they think they killed, they think they destroyed, and they think they did it and with impunity that they can get away with it. But the Lord says, not so. Last night I was teaching, I was doing a broadcast, and the Lord put, had my eyes fall on another scripture. In Psalm 63, verse 8, there's a verse that says, to the one that wants to destroy your life, that one will go down into the lower parts of the earth. I tell you, that's not going to the beach in the Southland. That's going down into the earth, into eternal judgment. So people need to be very careful about how they treat other people. I, I've seen people, they treat people anyway, and they think that's okay. They treat people any way they want to treat them, and they think it's all right. And it's not all right. Lift your hand and say, Father, you're going to judge the evil. You're going to destroy what is against me completely in Jesus' name. Now, this message is like a handwritten message from the heart of God right now. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I came to do. That's what I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do. A handwritten note from our Father to say what he's going to do. He's going to begin to fulfill promises that he's given us. I know we all have promises that we haven't seen fulfilled yet. I have a big list, a big stack of them, and I'm waiting to see them. And I want to say in this hour, prophetically, whatever it's going to take for the Lord to get us to the place we need to be at, it's going to happen. You have to get to a point in your walk with God, where you say, I, I, Lord, there's no more waiting time. Not, nothing is acceptable. There's nothing, there's nothing to wait for. Lift your hand and say, I'm not going to wait. People wander around wondering what it is they're doing, what, what's, you know, looking around and just accepting things the way they are. No, God never called you to accept things the way they are. He wants them to be in line with his own plans. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yes. Now this is going to be the time when God's going to begin to give land and property to his own servants. It's going to be a time when he's going to begin to give wealth and treasures to his own elect. It's a time when he's going to bless people and give them things they've not had before things they've been waiting for, things we've been promised but haven't yet received them in tangible reality. This is going to be the year and the season of manifestations of God's promises to us. Amen. Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I receive mine. Lord, now, if you do or you don't, that's okay with me. I'm getting mine. I'm right here receiving mine. It's up to you to receive yours. And... Uh, I'm the messenger, you know, the message is from him. The manifestation and fulfillment of things we've been waiting for. This is that day and hour, oh my God, when they're going to begin to happen. Now, Nehemiah... Um, I like, I like the life of Abraham. Abram started out in his father's house. He had nothing. Uh, I mean, he had, he had some business going, but he was still in the house of an idol worshiper, and God told him, get out and go somewhere where I'll lead you and I'll show you. And God made him very rich, made his name very great, made him even the father of nations. But he wasn't any of that before God began to cut his covenant with him. Anybody who God loves deeply, will he'll make a covenant with you. And anybody that loves God deeply will want to have covenant with him and make a vow and say, Lord, I'll serve you all the days of my life, but this is some, there's some things that I need here. And then the Lord begins to speak about amazing things that he had planned to give, but you... Somehow you haven't seen them yet. Well, I tell you, thus saith the Lord. And I speak to everyone who's hearing my voice in any way. Thus saith the Lord. This is going to be the time of manifestations of God's promises to us. We're going to receive the, the, them from the Lord. 
And however they need to come, they need to come. Now, part of our job is to help those things along that they begin to happen. Isaiah 45, 11, write that down. It's a very powerful scripture. It says, concerning the works of my hands, I want you to command me. And he said, concerning what I'm going to do with my people, I'll show you things to come. Could you imagine God would say to, say to, say to me, uh, to us, from the prophet Isaiah, that he wants us to tell him what to do? Wow. Imagine that. Isaiah 48, 17 says, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit and I lead you in the way you should go. Deuteronomy 8, 18 said, I'm the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth. To establish my covenant for my purposes. Was God telling stories when he said that? No. Was he lying when he said that? No. When Jesus said, ask for what you want, then it will be given to you in Mark eleven twenty four, 24. In Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock. A-S-K, ask, and it will be given. Knock, and the door will be open. To, uh, seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Was, was Jesus telling stories? Or was he given a promise? I found that a lot of people are in church. And, you know, I don't care personally. I, I'm not, I don't pay it any mind. I'm just very busy on the mission that God's given me. And I look past everything that I need to look past. And I look at what I need to look at. And I see what I need to see. And I overlook what I need to overlook, which is a big job. <laughs> to forgive evildoers <laughs> and to overlook foolishness is a very big job. But we have to have a lot of grace to do that. But so, so I don't concern myself with, with situations that people are dealing with, except for one thing. I feel compassion for them at, at them being stuck in life, oppressed, bound, limited, not knowing something. Truth comes from the word. John 8, 32, in the, the words of Jesus himself, written in red, he said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. No, it didn't say it'll set you free. That's wrong. Correct yourself. If you set something up, you can set it down. If you set it up, you can knock it down. If you make something, you can't unmake it. It's made. That's the difference. The truth will make you free. Knowing the truth will make you free. So it's not enough for us to have church. It's we, we need to begin to study the word and, and take our lives in the direction that's going to cause change for the better for ourselves. Now, the Lord can speak about all kinds of Issues going on in society and nations and everywhere. But you know what? Right now, the Lord is addressing the individual. He's speaking about his promises to us. And I'll tell you why. Because the nation can't change unless people change first. If people don't catch a uh, hold of what God is doing, it's not possible for things to change for the better for them. I love this. Abraham, I wrote this in my book here. Abraham was blessed with the experience of learning more about God, which he didn't in his father's house, which tells me something. If you're in the wrong environment, you can't grow very much. You have to find the environment that's going to help you grow, especially to know the ways of God. Can you say amen? Learning more about God and hearing God's direct plans, what he, exactly what he wants to do. And this happened before he experienced the blessings and the increase. He became what the Bible says was he was the friend of God. Abraham was the friend of God. He was in the Ur of Chaldees with Terah, his father, 
in his father's house. Genesis 12, 1. And then by the next chapter in 13, Genesis 13, 2, he was very rich. And he was on his way to have the covenant being made with him. The 13th chapter of Genesis, Abram was made very rich. He was already walking with God. He had obeyed God to leave his father's house and get out there and let the Lord lead him and talk to him and teach him and train him. And then by the 15th chapter of Genesis, the covenant thing began. And once the covenant thing came, God made Abram, Abraham, Abraham. The H was from Yahweh, Jehovah, the H on the name. And Sarai, his wife, Sarai, her name ended with I. She was a real domineering woman, the Bible says. She was very strong-minded. But then she got the touch of heaven, and she bowed her knee and called her husband Lord, which was not like Sarah. Why? Because she received the nature change. God put part of himself into her own name. He put part of himself, his nature, into the middle of Abram's name and made him Abraham, the father of many nations. So where we began is never the place we're supposed to end up. We're not supposed to stay there. We're supposed to move. And if there's something you don't like happening in your world, it's for you to begin to change it. Lift your hand and say, Lord, everything's going to change for the better. I tell you, I'll tell you a prophetic word. And I don't want to talk to lazy, disobedient people that have no sense. You need to get corrected. You need to get yourself together. Look at that baby go. She's really going. I like that baby. She came up to say hi to me. She's a smart little baby. Now she's running all over the place. It's her place, man. This is her place. Let's let her go. Let her do. It. Just keep her inside the in the compound, though. <laughs> the Lord, the Lord will will teach us to know His ways, and as we learn of Him, great things will begin to happen. Until then, they don't happen. So the Holy Spirit is going to begin to cause people to feel a real unrest. A real dissatisfaction. I feel that about a lot of things. I'll tell you the truth. Things need to change. Lift your hands. Let's pray right now. Let's pray. Things need to change in every person, in every place, in every way. And that's what's going to change the nation. People complain about the government. Yeah, it's a lot of problems. I agree. People complain about government issues. People complain about economic issues, society, things that people are doing. A lot of problems, a lot of issues that need to be corrected. Some things are not right. But you know where? You know where things begin to change for the better for you? When you realize that no matter what's going on outside, the most important thing is what's going on inside of me, in my life, in my world. I have my space. I have my place. I have my grace. And I need to take care of that. And it seems almost, you know, you, 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 you might, it might sound like you're being self-serving. But you have to serve yourself. You got to serve God. You have to serve yourself. Let me tell you about people. Let me get right into it. I want to get into this. Nehemiah chapter 3. I'll just give you a reference. It's a place where they rebuilt all the, all the broken gates. They began to build the uh, uh, house. It says the governor's house. I don't like that in Kenya because uh, we don't have to build a house for a governor. They take care of themselves. They already got too much money. Amen. Coming from all kinds of places, they can take care of themselves. Can you say amen? amen. I wouldn't give a, a, anything to help that project, but I would definitely want to build something for myself. And I definitely would want to build something for hurting people that maybe can't help themselves. We can help them along. Can you say amen? amen? But the big guy that's taken care of, leave them alone. Unless it's an anointed servant of God. If you see a man who's a servant of God, who's very well to do, you can plant an offering into their life and receive a harvest back. 
Guess what? You're not giving something to enrich them. They're already rich. But you're giving something to yourself because you're tapping the grace of what they're walking in. So when you do it like that, that's great. But someone that's in the world and they already seem to have everything, don't cry over them. Take care of yourself. Lift your hand and say, this is going to be the season for me, Lord, where I, I get things fixed in my life. This is going to be the time and the season where I'm going to get things fixed in my life. And I command it so, according to Isaiah 45, 11. You said, concerning the works of my hands, you command me. Isaiah 55, 11 said, my word will not return back to me empty. It'll prosper in the thing I sent it to do. And that's what's going to happen. And Mark 11, 23 says, speak to mountains and they'll move for you. Mark eleven twenty four said, whatever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you'll have it. John 15, 7 says, as you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you will and it'll be done for you. It'll be granted to you by my Father who's in heaven. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, when we ask things according to his will, he grants us the petitions that we ask him for and grants us our heart's desires. Psalm 37 talks about how the righteous will flourish, but the wicked will be cut down. Oh, them babies are at the gate. Somebody watch them babies. They're going out. Oh, they, they're escaping. They crawl through the hole in the gate. You better get them. I'm watching them. Hey, two little mommies, come back inside. All right. Rescue mission. They did this, you know. They're so small. They squeeze through the iron bars. And here you got another. You got you people like gates here. Maybe that's ne Nehemiah. There's a lot of gates, you know. Nehemiah chapter 3. You can read that as a reference point. They built this. They rebuilt this. They rebuilt that. Why? Because everything was messed up. But in the midst of them doing that, they also took care of themselves. Nehemiah 2.17 to 20 said, Nehemiah rebuked the evil two that were opposing them, and those who were opposing them and said, you will have no part in this mission, but the God of heaven himself will prosper us, and we will arise and build. I want to prophesy, this is the time to arise and build. Things you've not done yet are yet going to happen. Sometimes it seems like things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Mark 9, 23 said, with man, things can seem impossible, can be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I can make a new word. With him, all things are possible. So all things are him possible, not impossible. With man, they're impossible. With him, they're him possible. They're all possible. This victory we have, the Bible says, and no weapon in many places it talks about the look up the word victory in your study and see how many times the word victory is mentioned in the Bible. It's, it's very powerful. And meditate on those verses and, and memorize them and learn them. But in Isaiah 54, 17, the Lord said what? He said, I will not let anything formed against you prosper. Any trap set for you, the one that said it will fall into it. Any issue that came to you to destroy you or to deceive you or to hurt you or to steal from you will flip back on the evildoer and you won't die, they will. Any witchcraft that's come against us, we turn it back upon the sender and it will kill and destroy the one that sent it. In Jesus' name, I speak as God's prophet. People that throw things at you and speak evil words and devise things against you, they're all going to die in this season. There's going to be nothing left of them, if, unless they get saved. We hope they can get saved, but that's their own problem. You know, an evildoer should not be felt sorry for. They're not to be the recipient of pity or compassion at all. It's only like repent or die. I like what my friend Bishop J.B. Masinde says. He says, the witches 
and, and these people that are evil that want to hurt all of us or destroy the works of God or anything, they only have three choices. Number one, to stop doing what they're doing. Number two, to repent and get saved. Or number three, die. And you say, help yourself. Help yourself. Have at it. Whatever you want to do, take care. Take care of yourself. You want to end up, according to Psalm 63, verse 8, down in the lower parts of the earth? Have at it. Take care of it. Take, take yourself there. And God did not say that he was in favor of evildoers. He never said it. Lift your hands right now. I'm teaching the Bible here. I want you to understand the Bible. There, I challenge you to give me a verse from this holy book. I take, I'm working here. I got to get it and hold it up. I got to hold it up. I challenge you to give me a verse from this Bible where God said he's in favor of an evildoer. Unless it was something when he was judging it, the Israelites for some evil that they did. Maybe he allowed an enemy to do something against them. But he was never on the side of the evildoer. The only hope for an evildoer is for them to repent and get saved. Or else there's eternal consequences to what they've been doing. You know, this is not talked about in Kenya. I could feel it. It's like a foreign thing. You know, pa pastors, they couldn't say this, you know, because maybe some pastors are guilty themselves. They have too much mess in their life. They can't correct unrighteousness. You know, the Bible says, what, Paul said, when you fulfill your obedience, then you can revenge disobedience. So some things people should not go after because their life is not okay. Themselves. They can't correct certain things. They can't maybe speak against corruption in the government or the society because they themselves are corrupt. Lift your hands. It's getting quiet. Now you're getting quiet now. You see what I mean? You people need deliverance. Lift your hands right now. No, 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 no. You, you can't back me to the corner and I'm going to change my message. No, I'm staying right here. I'm stronger than you. You don't know me. I'm God's man. Lift your hands. Pray right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray. God's going to destroy wickedness. If he doesn't do it, if people don't rise up against it, your whole society stays stuck. Do you think it's okay, the poverty that you see everywhere? What's the root cause of poverty? Sin. Poverty is the offspring. Poverty is the child of the father, Satan, and the mother, sin. Oh, yes. Evil and deception. And then ignorance in the mind that the devil laughs at people because they're so poor and messed up and everything is a mess and everything is broken. You can go to a city like Dubai. I've been there many times. And see the beautiful buildings. You'll never see them here. Lift your hands. Kenya has to change for the better. You, you look at neighborhoods where people build things in Europe and America and other places and even some of the Asian countries and parts of the Middle East. You'll see beautiful structures and buildings and architecture. You, you don't see it here. Why? Because it's not in the people's mind. The Chinese come here and build some box thing with things that don't even work. And you think that's a house. Amen. Or the Indians. The Indians are building the other ones. And now you got another ethnic group coming to build. They're, they're trying to get into the building business. They just do what they want. Then you have all these structures just made with concrete blocks and dirt on the floor and broken roads. Is that... Is that the will of God for his people? Is that how he wants us to live? Are you kidding me? Did Solomon live like that? Did Abraham live like that? Did, a, did David live like that? Even Jesus had women who were rich, who supported the work, and so much money came in. You see that in the book of Luke chapter 8. You can write that down. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, that these women were... So much was there that there was a thief as the treasurer, Judas. And they didn't miss the money that was missing because they had so much. The problem you need to have is that you have so much when something's missing a little bit, you don't even realize it. That's the way to live. If you have little, the little that you have, if something happens to that, you're going to really, you're, you're really be crying. 
But God only wants abundance for us. Lift your hands. I know people like that. They say, oh, I want money. I want money. Yeah, money's good. Money's good. It's not, it's not a bad thing to say that. You need it to live in this world. A lot of things just boil down to how much money do you have for the project. Do you have it or you don't have it? If you don't have it, you don't get the thing done. If you have it, you can pay what you need to pay and get things done. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to have a lot of money. That's a prophecy. I'm going to have a lot of money in my life that I could do everything God wants me to do. What's the reason for God's prosperity? So that we can fulfill his mission. That's what it's for. Not so you can work to steal from another. Not so you can just uh, be selfish and sinful. No. It's to fulfill the, the will of God. Put your hand on your heart. I want you to get this deep in your spirit. I want you to catch this, 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 this thought. God wants us to be prosperous. And the reason for that is so we can fulfill the mission that he has for us to fulfill. That's what it is for. That's what money's for. Money is a tool. Someone said money doesn't make you happy. Well, it does if you can spend it. Money itself won't make you happy, but spending it and using it makes you very happy. That's what it's for. It has a purpose. And if you didn't need it, then why would the Bible talk about it so much? I'm going to tell you something. About 500 times in Scripture, there are, there are verses about prayer and faith. About 500 verses. But there's over 2,000 verses on material things and money and resources and business and commerce and land and property and blessings. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I got to have some of that for me. Every person God makes a covenant with, he wants to give them land and property. Otherwise, you're just dealing with a, a, a reckless person that owns the place where you are. And you don't, you, you're not in control because you don't own it. Lift your hand and say, it's time for me to own some things. I, I, heard, I heard the word of the Lord before I got into this right now. I heard the Lord, the Lord was speaking to me about, this is going to be a time for his people to possess the land. Time to possess the land, possess new things, new business, new life, great flourishing of ministry if you're in ministry, business if you're in business. Whatever you need for your, your life and your family and things you want, you're going to have them. It's the plan of God for us to have those things. It absolutely is the plan of God for us to have those things. Now, I, I want to talk about four P's, P words that I spoke about here. In my book, number one was people. I wrote, I wrote this. Avoid being surrounded by people who don't support your vision. Find people who love what you are called to accomplish. And they will help you succeed. It's in this book. And uh, the leaders here got a copy of this already. Uh, so several of the leaders but I, I want you all to get a copy so I'm going to be at that table in the back when we finish you could come and see me there and I will sign a copy for, for you and I'll even speak a blessing over you and a prophetic prayer over you all right if you want to get it just meet me at the back table and we'll tell you how now uh, how, how we can take a few moments to do that when I'm when I'm finished here now When you announce your vision, your, your true vision, if you announce it, sometimes it's better not to say anything. You will find out your true, your true supporters. You'll find out who's with you and who isn't with you. God, did, here's another one. God didn't call you to work alone. He called you. When he called you, he also called other people to help you achieve the dream. The people that I call that are good, I call them the dream team. The best of the best. T-B-O-T-B. -B, the best. The best of the best. First letter, acronym. The best of the best. The dream team. What is that? People that can help fulfill the dream. The mission that God has ordained. What he's ordained us to do. 
Here's a powerful amen or ouch. You can say amen or ouch <laughs> on this one. If you're losing in any way, take stock and inventory of your friendships and associations. Because if you're with the wrong people, Boy, I need a sound team that I need my monitors. I need my microphones. I need it's gonna, but I'm, I'm managing, but I, I wish I had more going on here. I need it. Father, take care of it for me. In Jesus' name. I'm serious. And move away from people who limit you. If they stand in your way, you need to kick them out of the way. Or if they're stubborn and they don't want to move or they look like kind of stupid, you know, kind of like they don't want to, they don't know. Just walk around them. And don't stay back here. Get here. Move forward. People. Oh, the importance of people. Yeah. I did a whole series on that. I'm going to write another book on that. The importance of people. All right, let me move back. I, I have a lot more just on the subject of people. But I wanna... Who, all of you that got this book and people that are going to get this book, you need to really, really, really. All right, there's a P word called progress. There's one called praise. There's one called prayer. There's one called prophecy. I want to just uh, skip past those for the moment and get to progress. God, Here's a principle. God loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves you too much to leave you the way you are right now. He wants you to become better. Even this very day and hour. <laughs> Woo. God corrects his sons. Receive it and rejoice. Hebrews 12, 5 to 11 talks about that. Correction seems grievous, but you have to take it. If something's wrong, you have to get it fixed. If you need to know something that you're not aware of, you need to find out what it is. Even if it seems painful to know it, that's the way you're going to grow and get past the problem you're in. Yeah. Another P word is problem, but I didn't write about problems. This is a, this is a positive book on success. I was not going to make a, a chapter about problems. We have enough of them already. I want to give the solutions. Can you say amen? Yeah. So I'm looking at it right here. I said, I don't have, I don't have a subtitle on the word on problems. I, I think I didn't even want to write about problems. We have, we know what they are, but they have to be fixed. Can you say amen? amen? You start out as a child, so you don't begin perfect, but you develop along the way. Even as an adult, you develop. Every day should be a learning time for you to go higher in life. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. It's my time to shine. Isaiah 60 said, arise and shine. And the glory will be upon you. And he said, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. And the forces of the Gentiles. Which means wealth. Say, wealth is coming to me in Jesus' name. From everywhere. Resources are coming to me from everywhere. Say that right now. Say in Jesus' name. They're coming to me. Promotion, God puts you through a process to form himself and his divine image in you. And if you serve him first, you'll get promoted. Promotion doesn't come from man, it comes from the Lord. And God wants to begin to bless us. Let's, let's pray right now for a minute. Let's just pray. Let's just pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your promotion, your power, progress. You've made us to be persevering. 
I put something about that in the book because perseverance is powerful. You, ha you have to have patience also. You have to be, uh, be patient for the promise to come. The promise of God will come, but you have to be patient. You have to persevere through every problem you've had. But the main thing is that we're going to get to the destination and the Lord's going to begin to bring us there. There's no more waiting time allowed. The waiting time is over. Time is ticking. Too much time has gone by. And if I were to talk about, uh, it really bring a heart-to-heart -heart talk with every person about how much time you've lost in your life, we'd all cry together. But we don't need to do that right now. We need to rejoice that God is helping us to have the victory in every way, shape, or form. Lift your hands and let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Let's pray together. The victory that God has commanded us to have, we are having it, and it is having us. It is our place, it is our status, it is our posture, it is our position, it is our place of grace, it is our place that we will have everything good that God's ordained for us to have. This is the season, this is the year now of the manifestation and fulfillment of God's promises for our life. The things that we're supposed to have that we don't yet have, we need to have them now. For what purpose? So that we can fulfill the plan of God. That we can expand the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. This is what it's all about. Let's stand on our feet. Everybody just stand up right now. Lift your hands to the Lord. Shaka rantala baha solo shela haiti. Sada machala hasa tarabahayata. Thank you, Lord, for your favor and blessing. Thank you, Lord, for your increase and promotion. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of God. Thank you, Lord, for your touch of your mighty hand upon us. Deliver us from all sickness, disease, ailments, problems, obstacles, setbacks, oppression, depression, rejection, sadness, loneliness, tiredness, frustration, stress. Take it out of us. And take the people that are causing it away from us. And Father, we thank you that the evildoers that have tried to destroy, you basically said all through your word that the curse of the Lord will be upon them and they will not make it. Father, invoke that right now. While I was speaking last night on the live broadcast, the Lord showed me the scripture in Psalm 63, verse 8. He said, those that want to destroy your life, meaning to, the, the, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Whatever part that is, to lie to you, to cheat you, to con you, to steal from you, to abuse you, to, to, to waste your time and your resources and your life and cause you stress and pain and problem. That person is going down. Lift your hands. And they're not going to make it. And guess what? That's not cruel to say that. They did it to themselves. They chose that way. And every person I prophesy that's an ev bringer of evil is being cursed and cast out and crushed and put out of our way. That nothing shall stand in our way. Everything that is in our heart's desire is coming to us. You said in Psalm 37, the righteous will flourish, but the wicked will be cut down. The book of Proverbs, Solomon said, either you're wise or you're foolish. The righteous are like this, the wicked are like that, the wise are like this, the foolish are like that. We are amongst the wise and the righteous. That's who we are. And Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, according to Isaiah 11, 2. That's coming into us and filling us to overflowing. Give us supernatural strength and Lord, take all pain out of us. All pain that's been caused by affliction, take it out of us. And I'm not just talking about physical, but emotional pain, emotional damage, mental turmoil, sadness, stress, frustration, irritation, agitation, anxiety. Take it from us. In Jesus' name right now, we thank you for total deliverance. Nehemiah 8.10 said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, I have, will have joy. Psalm 16.11 said, at his right hand, there's joy and pleasures forevermore. And that's what we need to have. 
even Psalm 63, that even had that fierce verse in it, in the eighth verse, we're talking about what will happen with the evildoer. He said, even the jackals will eat them, which is the wild dogs. In Africa, you have them. You have hyenas. You have wild dogs. They tear flesh. They eat. Why would the scripture say the jackals shall eat these evildoers? Why? Because of God is so grieved at what they did. Don't accept an evildoer. The thing you need to get good at is forgiving them and letting them go. Because when you forgive, you release yourself. Forgiveness, I'll teach you something about forgiveness. Forgiveness does not absolve the guilty from their guilt. It frees you from the whole thing. It takes you out of that problem. It removes you from them. Are you learning anything today? Yes. It takes you away from them. So get rid of all bitterness. Lord, kill bitterness. Bitterness and pain and agitation and frustration and cynicism and looking at things in a bad state because our experience has been so bad. If you see a man that seems frustrated, there's a reason for that. He's seen too much nonsense, too much rubbish, too much garbage, too much evil. But Father, you have to help us in this evil world to look at what's good. Now, part of this in the realm of what I'm teaching on success, I didn't get to that chapter. There's a lot more in this book, a lot. I didn't even do uh, a hundredth of one percent of it. I didn't even do just a drop, a drop in the ocean that I gave you from this book. But there's so much in here. But on success, we have to produce our environment by, by who we surround ourselves with. The wise walk with the wise and become wiser, Solomon said. Iron sharpens iron. The rich man has many friends, but the poor man, even his neighbor, hates him. Why? Because the neighbor always needs something. The poor man always needs, the poor neighbor always needs something. It's always a problem. But a rich person comes, if they talk to you, a, a successful person, they don't talk about a problem, they talk about something good. So decide to elect yourself to be in the company of the wise, the rich, and the successful, and away from the poor and losing and ignorant. Come on, that's powerful what I just said. Oh, yes. Lift your hands right now. Say, Lord, I elect myself. Elect me, please. Elect me, please, Lord. Help me, help me, help me. I elect myself. To be amongst the wise, the rich, and the successful. And away from the poor and losing and ignorant. And evil. Let evil be far from me. Let's keep praying. Keep praying right now. Keep praying right now. These words will happen for us. They'll happen in the society. They'll happen in the environment. And that's why we bring television cameras and all that. Because it's not just enough for us to hear this people out everywhere need to hear this teaching and you know sometimes it's hard to get somewhere to travel far and to have hardly any sleep and be moving and dealing with so many things but then in, in the in, in the behind the sacred desk here the lord begins to speak and he wants to bring it to millions of people i pray this word will go out and touch the lives of millions of people literally lord you breathe upon it and make that happen because this is an answer from you. It's a love letter from the Lord. Now you were playing the keyboard, but you don't, you started and you stopped and you make a decision. Very low, soft, very soft, and very soft. Thank you. Soft, 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 down, down, down. Just keep it. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the pastors here. Thank you, Lord, for all the people here. Thank you, Lord, for the woman of God. The bishop here. Where's your husband? Am I ever going to meet your husband? Is he here? Seriously? Is that you? Come up here. Come come up here and say hi to me. I, I was praying. Hey, man. Wow. I, I was praying. I was praying. I was wondering where you were. God bless you. We'll get to talk. I want to talk some with you. Give a hand clap to this man. Wow. Hallelujah. He's right there the whole time. I didn't know. 
Wow. Lift your hands, everybody, and say, Lord, touch me right now. Give me your favor like I've never seen it. From today, this first Sunday of the year, let me walk in the... Let me walk in your power in ways I, I've never seen before. Let favor of blessing come to me like I've never seen it. Amen. The Lord is going to do the most amazing things because he's saying, I need my promises fulfilled in your life. I need my promises fulfilled in your world. Yeah. And it's not optional. Lord, I command it so. Me, I'm Thomas. I'm your servant. Thomas Manton, I am, I am yours. I say to you, my father Jehovah, that things that we need right now today need to come into our hands. And they'll not be delayed another second. Those that have harmed us, and treated us like like uh, refuse and like animals they will pay for that but the righteous will flourish now surround us lord with righteous people and remove every evil doer away from us every liar every deceiver expose them for your people and chase them out people that smile in your face and talk to you talk to you they lie they cheat they steal they con they connive they subvert, they undermine, and they're right there standing with you. Lord, expose them and remove them. I heard a story of a Kikuyu church, believe it or not, somewhere around, around uh, that, down that way. And uh, these guys were standing with the pastor, and they went to the company house to change the names of the corporation and the bank accounts to themselves. And the pastor was saying, I'm a man of prayer. I don't want to deal with the business of the ministry. You guys can handle that. They stole the whole thing from him. And they were stealing the money that was coming into the church. And they put the church uh, uh, corporation in their own name. And yet I found out that the head guy that was doing all this with the others was still there. I said, is he still there in the church? They said, yes, he's still there. I said, he hasn't died yet? Lift your hands. A man like that has no future. And there are many people around like that do these kind of things. They lie, they steal, they kill, they destroy. You, you got to be so strong to, to keep those kind of people away from you. And I pray the Lord will help us. Lord, let your angels be around us that nobody evil can stand with us. Anybody that has a bad heart about anything toward us. Anybody that has a a slothful spirit that they don't want to work and progress. They can't be in our company. People have to produce and bring things, creativity and brilliance and excitement and vitality. They have to work to build the vision that you have. You have a company. You need to see it pr prosper and flourish. You need to have the right people helping you. You have a ministry. You need the right people helping you. You have an organization, if you, even if you're in the government, so many r fightings and, and underminings and jealousy and competition and hatred, it's all through the society. You have to step past that and begin to prosper and succeed. How many believe God will help us? How many believe his word today? This is the season of the fulfillment and manifestation of his promises in a, for our lives, personally. Yes, there's a corporate blessing, there's movements. I'll get into that in another meeting, uh, another session somewhere. But the Lord is going to speak about the nation and the affairs of the nation. But really, he wants us to be doing well. Can you say amen? amen. Turn your neighbor and give him a high five billion and say, hey, you're going to do well. Give him a high five billion and say, hey, you're going to do well. I see greatness in your future. I see the prosperity of God in your life. I see the favor and blessing of the Lord in your world. I see great things happening for you that you've never seen before. It's unfolding today in a new way. It's going to be more than we can even ask or think 
According to Ephesians 3.20, God will do more than we can ask or think. 1 Corinthians 2 9 said, I have not seen, heard, not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the great things that God's prepared for those who love him. He makes all things to work for, together for our good. Romans 8 28 said, Because we're called according to his purpose. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Shout out, Prasha. Father, I release the fire of your blessing upon your people. Clear their minds. Uh, Clear the people's minds. Bring them out from the realm of being stuck and in a, in a, in a lonely, lazy pl place of being stuck. Uh, not progressing, not moving. Begin to remove the wrong people that are around them, away from them. Take them out of their way. Begin to give them brilliant friends, uh, new environments, great things that you want to do. I thank you, Lord, that it's going to happen from today. In Jesus' name, and that is the word of the Lord. All right, I'm Thomas Manton the Fourth. I'll be in the back. You can come and get a copy of this book. Uh, it's how much was it? It was on sale for just a thousand shillings. You can come and see me. I'll sign a copy for it, and then I want to pray a, pro a prophetic prayer over you. If you're there, some people could visit us at the back. I, Father, I release your healing fire. I thank you, Lord, for the healing touch upon every physical body, deliverance from every affliction whatever the devil threw at us is going back seven ways and the sender will be the recipient we will never be the the consumer of evil we will never be the recipient of what evil has been thrown at us it goes back away from us upon those that sent it in jesus name teach people not to do evil deal with them and some people are, are crazy. They're evil. They don't want to change. They think they're okay being just like that. So, Lord, you'll have to judge them and remove them. But I thank you for a righteous remnant rising, righteous people all around us, the movement of the organizations, the businesses, the companies, the ministries, the, the life, the families flourishing and succeeding in ways we've not seen because God, wants to manifest his precious promises to us. Things that we've heard from him before, but we haven't seen them yet. I prophesy they're coming. I prophesy they're coming into our lives right now in manifestation in Jesus' name. All right, I'll see you on the next uh, broadcast. God bless you. See you in the next church or the next meeting when I come here again. Let's see. Let's do some more things together. Praise the Lord. We just met with... Let, let, let's do some more things together. Amen. Do you love me? I love you. That's why I came. I came a long way. It wasn't an easy journey. And uh, but the Lord works it. Out. He always works it out. You ladies have been standing here the whole time. I like you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Mama. God bless you. I'll be at the back. I'll see you there. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.